Hi guys, welcome or welcome back. Thanks so much for joining me today. We are going to talk about how to do well in print competitions and this is going to be a deep one. So buckle up and let's get going. If you haven't already, please do remember to press the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. The bell icon will help you out because it'll give you a notification every single time I upload a video, I upload every week and usually now more than that if I feel like it. This is an example of a Table Talk Tuesday and although we're not sat at the table, we're sat next to it so it kind of counts. I wanted to sit and answer a question which has been asked so many times, which is basically how do you start doing print competitions and like how do you do well at them and the age old golden question of how do you win a print competition? So in today's video, we're gonna discuss that. I will break this video up into convenient little sections which you can follow along by moving the little scrubber red line thing down at the bottom. And I'm gonna intersperse with some assets and other bits and pieces. If you guys don't know uh, me or who I am, welcome first of all to the channel. Join us for crazy photography and portrait related stuff. And I am Jess McGovern. I got married last year, I was Jess Wheelands and I uh, am very fortunate to be the uh, Pet Photographer of the Year with the NPAs awards. So my little trophy is right here. I'm not a print competition veteran. Actually last year 2020 was the first time I have ever entered a print competition but I attacked it with the same level of strategy and planning that I atta attack most things in life. So um, you could say that I did my research and I have been very fortunate to speak to so many multi-award winning photographers. So if, yeah, if you don't know, I won the Pet Photographer of the Year last year. I also had a ridiculous number of merited images and I also had a lot of finalists. I think there was 13 in the end. I'm very grateful for receiving that and I learned so much through the process. So, I wanna discuss with you guys today kind of what print comms are, which will be step one, section one, and then we will also go ahead and discuss main basic things that need to be kind of like sorted for every print competition. And then we'll go into basically how do you win or do really well in, in the print competition that you're looking at. So three very vital things there. Number one, what is print comp? Well, first rule about print comp is we don't talk about print comp. The main thing to be aware of in terms of print comp is it's in the name. There's usually going to be a printed section. You are likely to have to print your print and send them in. You will probably get scored on your print quality and the choice of papers and things like that. So if you're a print virgin, you need to pop that print in cherry and go ahead and start printing your work. So you can get a feel for which papers you like, which printers you like, all sorts of other stuff. You guys know me so well now <laughs> that I don't need to repeat that I personally use a digital lab at the moment for any of my client and uh, award and project images. I use the Amiga RAG fine art paper and that's what I use. So if you were wondering, there you go. In terms of what happens, essentially, usually there's like rounds, you submit your images and they get judged by a panel of judges. The judging is very, very kind of like structured and there'll be a clear criteria kind of like for what gets points and what doesn't get points. And realistically guys, main thing to remember is that print comp is a point based scoring system. Your main aim is to not lose points. As far as I'm aware, nearly every print comp in the world works on the principle of giving the image as many points as they possibly can, usually out of 100, and then they knock points off for things that have gone wrong. You will lose points very quickly for the basics not being correct. The basics are things like clipped highlights, blocky or lost shadows, things like the focus being in the wrong place, lighting being crap, composition being really poor, there not being a specific focal point in the image, the image being too busy, and a whole host of other stuff. And if I forget something, I'll put it on the screen now. 
but that is the basics and you will immediately lose points. You will go from being in the winner, finalist, merit section right down into the rest of them. So that is probably the first thing to remember. If your goal is to merit, you will need a certain percentage or amount of points to be able to achieve that merit level. If your aim is to be a finalist, you need to be further up there. And if your aim is to win, basically you need a foot perfect image that has got nothing wrong with it at all and will appeal to the majority of the judges because the scoring is usually averaged. If four of the judges like what you've done and there's four other judges and they hate it, the hating judges will bring it down. So there is an element of subjectivity, which we'll come on to in a second. Um, but yeah, so just you kind of want to go for something that is pleasing to a lot of different photographers and different art people. That's a kind of the bare minimum there. So you have to have the basics sorted. The secondary side of print comp is the editing, which over the last 20, 30 years has become quite fine art-esque in its kind of style. There will be different competitions that will suit your style. So remember that. The vast majority of print comps will judge your work in a variety of different areas. One of those will be those basic sections. But to be honest, the most important thing in my opinion, for print comp is going to be the impact. Initial impact will get the judge's attention and it will score, score super, super high. So if your image has a lot of impact, it will do better than an image that's exactly the same quality, but has a lower level of impact. It's kind of like a normal day. So you want to try and make sure that your images are unique and beautiful, staggering, stunning. The next thing that most uh, people don't really understand is that you have to remove the emotional attachment to your work. And that can be really, really hard if it's something that you've never had to do before, but you have to be so objective and really kind of scientifically brutal about how you select your images and how you work through your images for print comp because you are going to get the points. You're not going because, oh, I love this picture and therefore I'm going to enter it. So I actually asked Peter Rooney, who well, I will mention later on as well. I asked Peter Rooney for what he would say would be the most important thing when you're wanting to win or do well in print competitions. He gave me the perfect answer and I couldn't agree more. He answered with, and, and I quote, three things for me are wow factor, storytelling and emotion. If I can capture a narrative that makes the judges stop and think then I'm confident that the image will do well. That's what I aim for. Let's just look at those again. So the wow factor that comes back to impact, right? Storytelling and emotion, again, kind of tie into that impact section. And you can't discount or omit the strength that an emotion and passing an emotion or feeling a mood in an image can do, which is one of the reasons why I'm really looking forward to the January challenge, because that kind of ties into it. If you can portray an emotion in your images, your images will probably do well. So let's look now at specific, like how are you going to do well in your print comp? How are you going to do well in the print comp that you're wanting to enter? Well, my friend, let me tell you. Okay, so number one, go back through the past winners of said print comp. I don't want you to copy them, but I want you to look at them from an objective point of view. So just get a look, get a feel, what kind of vibe is going on. So for example, World Photography Organization Awards, World Photography Awards, those are very kind of like documentary style, um, very kind of like real images, like gritty images tend to do well. So my images kind of don't fit with them. I'm not going to go and enter that competition because we're not a good match. We don't marry up particularly well. You could look at the Guild of Photographers where, to be fair, the majority of the high achieving or award winning images are quite um, fine art-esque. They've got a soft painterly effect. They're, they're kind of like single tone pieces of art. So yes, I have uh, done well with the Guild as well, but they're very different. The MPA International Awards obviously is the ones that I um, entered last year and did really well in. The MPA Awards, the previous winners included Peter Rooney. Peter has done well in loads of different awards, so it's not specific, but I looked at the winning images in multiple different categories, not just my niche. Remember that. So I was wanting to enter canine portraits, dog portraits, but I didn't just look at who won the dog category last year because I don't think 
I just I just don't agree with like focusing so much on your niche in situations like this. So I looked at who won the whole thing overall, who won each category, what was doing well, and I didn't just look at one year, I looked at quite a few years and tried to find similarities between the two, between all of them. That's kind of a straightforward way of looking at it and you'll find similarities. So for me, Peter has done really well in previous awards and me and Peter, our work is really quite different, but but there are some similarities and some of the similarities include things like the fact that Peter tends to use kind of like single or deep earthy tones in his work. He has a focal point of interest in the image and it tells a story through other things. The composition of Peter's work is usually solid and he doesn't just photograph things in a documentary style. It is quite to be fair, it's reasonably heavily edited because Peter composites his images from loads of different shots and then puts them together. Another interesting thing about Peter's work and why I think personally it does quite well in competitions is that there is more in the image than you think there is. So you look at a picture, first of all, I'll put one up of Peter's on the screen now that I personally like. If you look at it, it just looks like a siren tempting a guy into this lake but if you look closer there's like dead fish lower down in the image and there's lots of different elements happening so if you look at how the body falls apart there's a lot more detail in there all these things kind of came together mixed with other um, images and other photographers who had done it really well and kind of gave me a list of stuff that the MPA awards tends to score highly. And those things included, but were not limited to a deeper scene, singular or very few kind of like color variations in there, a clear emotion, multiple points of interest, good composition, and of course, all of the kind of technical stuff sorted. The main thing is your impact, then find a photography organization or photography award organization that will match your style. So you have to make sure that the kind of the the two come together there and it's fine that not every organization is going to be your organization that's absolutely fine so then the next thing to look at is the rules look at the rules and then look at them again and then look at them again and probably look at them again i would look at the rules multiple times and i would also look actually at past year's rules to see if there are any changes and what has changed like i said i do things in a very structured fashion sorry um, if this is a bit kind of ott hi i'm jess Look at the rules, try and find the judging criteria. Most organizations will publish the judging criteria. If they don't, look at people's blog posts on previous years of the awards, look at uh, previous promotions or press releases that have gone out and look for what they are actually looking for. Most competitions are judged on 10 points. And one of those is the print quality, one of them is usually impact, one of them is usually composition, one of them is usually lighting. So yeah, look at the judging criteria and look at what people are getting points for and what they're not. And you need to really be brutally scientifically specific about looking at your own images and saying, okay, this one is really just not working well for me. And if you don't know, again, go and ask somebody, get some advice, hire a mentor, do all of these things that will help you improve if you want to do well in print comps. Just to reiterate guys, do not copy somebody else's work. So don't copy who won last year's and make something similar because the judges aren't gonna wanna see the same thing done again. They want to see something different. They want to see something unique. So always produce unique work and enter your best of your best into awards. So how do you win a print competition? You have to produce something that the judges have never seen before, that hits the judges in the feels, that has a story there, that is technically perfect, that has perfect editing, so not obvious editing. And you know, if it is obvious editing, it just needs to be done really well. So no clone blobs here or there, and no you know dust spots in the image, none of that kind of basic stuff that you need to sort. And you just need to really make sure that this piece that you're entering fits the kind of organization or award series that you're entering it for. Because if you have one of those sections out of place, it's not gonna go well. And chances are, it's probably not your fault. It's just 
just didn't go for the right one. So look very carefully and always think, what can I do better next time? What can I do to increase this? And if like me, you have done really well in awards, I do have to ask, why are you watching this? But then after that, I would then suggest next time, don't do something the same. Go and look at the past winners and just assess, do I fit with this crowd? And if you think, yeah, I fit with this crowd, enter it. You'll never know if you don't. If you have any questions, please do let me know down in the comments box. And as YouTube seems to really like people giving comments, please do comment anyway, even if you've got nothing to say. Please be nice though, because there's no need to not be. And I will see you all again really, really soon.